is the only free thing you can do pretty much in Luxor. <laughs> literally looks like a different planet. Oh, driver tried to take us for a little bit of a ride, but we got there in the end. Today is the first day of our 48 hour period we've got here to explore Luxor. So we thought we'd start pretty early and head straight to the Luxor Temple. Maybe before anyone else gets there, maybe not, we'll see. just gotten into the temple it is just about 7 a.m. and we're one of about three groups in here yes. what the heck there's literally no one here we just got to walk through this cool entrance all by ourselves it's crazy how big everything is So this temple was built 3,400 years ago by Amenhotep III, but it took so long to build that it was eventually taken over by Ramesses II. When he took it over, he remodeled most of the monuments after himself. Yeah. Damn, you can see that! Don't nobody want your babies? He ended up reigning for ages, 60 years, and he built the most Egyptian things that you can see. So everywhere you go, you will see statues of Ramesses II. I do know why they do that. They do it because they believe that the only way to be fulfilled, I guess, in the afterlife was if you were remembered in the day-to-day -day life of people that were still living. I'm so glad that we got to be here with basically no one else. I think my favorite part was there's this area where you can still see some Roman paintings over the top and it just kind of messes with my mind because I forget that they were around the same era. I think my favorite part was the statue that's there. Very, very cool. As soon as you walk out of the Luxor Temple, you are on the alleyway at the Sphinxes. So we're going to go walk down there now. We are now in Avenue of the Sphinxes which is 2,000 meters long with about 600 statues dotted along the edges. And it connects Luxor Temple to Karnak Temple. And it's called the Avenue of the Sphinxes, but there's actually three different types of statues along the way. So there's Sphinxes, there's Rams, and then there's a combo of the two, which I think is called something funny. And we're by ourselves, probably because it's burning heat right now. <laughs> Cool. Really like seeing all the ancient walls and hieroglyphs and stuff. Amazing how detailed they are and how solid they are in the wall, like how pronounced they are. It's also so lucky that we did it so early because as we were leaving, the very first tour bus arrived. So we got to get out of there before all the people. And now we're hungry and our hotel is still doing breakfast. So nice, easy grub. Our 
list of things to do in 48 hours in Luxor is to take a sunset felucca ride. We're super excited to be able to watch the sunset from the Nile, even though we'll be doing this on our cruise every night. It feels special because it's on like a traditional style boat. So far, so good. Seen a couple of cool birds. Also, you can see the locals cooling off in the water, which is cool. It like hits the ground and then it keeps going. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Some bits like hit it and we're fine and I can pull it. Some bits hit it and just sludged all the way in, but that's fun. It's hard. <laughs> Got some welcome tea, mint tea. Really hot. Nah. Tastes really nice. It's hot. Tastes really nice. One of your faves, I reckon. You'll love that. I love mint tea, so it's delicious. It's all sugary and sweet as well. Okay. So far, so good. I've moved it a little bit. Some pesky reeds in the way that we get stuck on a bit, but. At least it's a nice place. And now we drift back down the Nile to our hotel as the sun sets. We were on like the loner boat because the kids sort of learning the ropes, but it was so much fun. Next thing on the list we actually have to cross the Nile for, but that's going to be tomorrow morning. I know we've already done a lot, but enjoy your montage, set to beautiful music of the lovely sunset we just enjoyed. <laughs> Second day of our 48 hour trip to Luxor and we started the morning straight back on the Nile, back on a boat. The Egyptians believed in many different gods, one of them being the sun god. They associated the east where the sun rises with life and the west where it sets with death. So we're starting this morning on the east bank where the sun rises and going over to the west bank where the sun sets to see the Valley of the Kings, which is where all of the ancient pharaohs are buried and you can go inside their tombs. Started at a very high price. Eventually, we've got a return trip ticket from the port to the Valley of the Kings for 150. I think that's okay. Plus, Colossi of Memnon. 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 Yes, we should be going to there after the tombs. We'll see. So we are now 
officially inside of the Valley of the Kings. The way the tickets work here is that you pay for entrance and that gets you entry into three of the open tombs. They rotate which tombs are open for preservation so they can keep people out of some for a while. There's also some tombs like Tutankhamun's one that cost extra to get into. We've opted not to pay for them. We've kind of heard that Tutankhamun's is cool to go into but really all of the fun stuff that's in there has been taken to Cairo Museum. First stop, KV6, Ramses the Ninth. <laughs> Inside King Ramesses the Ninth's tomb, we know nothing about him at all. We researched a few different pharaohs, and all of those tombs are closed, so we're not going to know much on this trip. But we do know that the oval shape with a line underneath means it's a name of a royal. And really surprised by how much colour is left in these tombs, like you can see it. Like some of it looks like it was just painted yesterday. Like now we're on to the next tomb. <laughs> about him either other than he is most famous as a warrior king because he fought off the sea people. I don't know who the sea people are or why they needed fighting off but good for him. Again, we unfortunately don't know that much about him, but I did just read that this tomb is best known for the cartouches, which is the oval we were talking about and the line underneath being scrubbed out and rewritten. So some point during history, they've come through and been like, oh, that's not about that royal person anymore. It's now about the city too. We're done with our three tombs at the Valley of the Kings now. One thing that we're just like blown away by is the landscape here. Like it literally looks like a different planet. It wouldn't surprise me if this was like a filming place for other planets. Also, it's kind of weird. You know that King Tut's was one of the last tombs to be found and like they thought the Valley of the Kings was done. We found everything. So that would make you think that King Tut's tomb is like ages away or way out of everything, but it's kind of right next to two, which I didn't expect. Um, also a word on cameras. We were a bit worried about bringing in the camera with our whole setup here, but it looks like they used to charge extra for cameras and they've blocked it out recently so it was free to bring into pretty much everywhere we just didn't risk it on the pyramids we struck a deal with our driver to take us up here to the valley of the kings and on the way back take us to the colossus of memnon before we get back on the ferry so and that colossus is the only free thing you can do pretty much in luxor <laughs> Colossi of Memnon and this is two massive stone statues of Pharaoh Amenhotep III. That name might not be familiar to you, but he was actually King Tut's dad. Ooh, driver tried to take us for a little bit of a ride, but we got there in the end. Now we're back on the ferry. Ferry cost Five pounds per person per way. We've got dinner with a nice view tonight. I know I've said that before and not delivered, <laughs> but we, we will do it tonight. <laughs> which is actually one of the most popular restaurants in Luxor for a beautiful dinner. We have gone for a Egyptian pie, which is a fatir. It's a beef one, so it's like a beef patty that's been wrapped in phyllo pastry and made all crunchy. And then we've got a penne pasta, which has been served in like a tagine clay pot. It looks so delicious. The food here is amazing, but the view, 
is out of this world and it just gets better and better as the night goes on. The sun sets and then the lights all turn on on the Luxor Temple and all of the sphinxes light up. It's just beautiful. You can even see it all the way across the Nile where we were today at the Valley of the Kings. We thought we'd treat ourselves to a last dinner up here because we actually leave Luxor tomorrow and cruise all the way down the Nile to Aswan.